All right, 100 days. First 100 days of campus ministry. Now, the question I have, and Bill's not here to answer, is does he mean your first ever 100 days or the first 100 days every year? And so let's just assume it's your first one, whatever 100 days. Your first time on campus, it's your first 100 days. The first thing I would tell you to do is don't think that you're going to... In the perfect world, you're not going to show up on campus on August, all right? If you could show up on campus in January to get moved in, get acclimated, that would be better. And so I am not thinking August, the school academic year. I'm thinking March. So let me put here March. And school starts in August, late August, early September, okay? And so that's what I'm basing this information on. The, one of the very first things I would do is, of the first 100 days, is go visit some campus pastors that are already on campus. All right? So visit, um, in my campus, we have BCM, Baptist Campus Ministry. We have Campus Crusade for Christ. We have uh, everybody. InterVarsity, InterVarsity is there. Uh, and some other groups, and you know your groups, go visit them. Now, they may not be happy that you're there, but they may, be, I would say nine out of ten, they will be happy that you're there. And so just talk to them. Ask them lots of questions. Come up with a list of questions that you, for example, you could ask questions like, uh, what do you think I should do? And listen to what he has to say, because he's been on that campus, or she has been on that campus, and she'll give you He'll give you a really good idea in what to do. Some of the idea, the, and listen, somebody told me the same thing. So I went to Florida State campus, and the very first thing I did is I went and visited the BCM guy, Baptist Campus Ministry. I said, can I have 30 minutes of your time? I'll buy you lunch. And he did. And so in my 30 minutes worth of time, I found out how to properly get a meeting space on campus. Now, there's another way to find out how to get a meeting space on campus. I'm sure there's a handbook, SGA book, uh, go to the union. But I found a really quick way is talk to the local campus pastor. And so I found information like meeting space. I found out about parking and ID cards. Uh, you know, you have to get permission to be on campus. You should find out how to get that permission. And uh, just because we've had problems in Chi Alpha in the past years of pastors, Chi Alpha pastors going through RUI, getting trained, doing the internship, going to the campus, and then the campus says, you're not welcome. We had a whole team go somewhere, and they're not allowed to go on that campus. So that really ruins the plan. So you need to find out, you know, if it's a public school, Usually it's open door policy. If it's a private school, how many of you are going to a private school or think about private school? Okay, that's different. That's difficult. So you need to find out. I would, the first thing I would do is find out if they're going to welcome you in Chi Alpha because privately they can say you're not welcome. Public schools, state schools, usually, but even then some of them can, pretty, can be pretty sticky. And they'll say stuff like, well, why do we need another Christian group on campus? And so you need to be ready and prepared to answer that question. But if you talk to the first, the first week of school, and I'm not going to talk day by day. I'm going to talk about week by week. The first weeks in March, I would visit every campus pastor. Let me tell you what that will do. It will humble you. It will show the other campus pastors that you're a team player, that you're not some arrogant know-it-all that's coming on campus. And we've had those. I've been on campus 13 years. And I've had the guys that come on campus, arrogant know-it-alls, and they don't last very long, all right, because they don't ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. All right, so I would ask and meet the first week in March, uh, all the visit, all the campus pastors. Number two, I would, the question I have for you is what are you trying to accomplish? If you're trying to accomplish to have Start Chi Alpha in September or uh, in August. You have your first meeting. If that's the goal, your first meeting, what does that meeting consist of? You're hoping that freshmen come. 
So I would go to the orientation office. Next. Find out when your school is having orientation. Orientation is for those students who have been accepted to the school and have to come to orientation. At Florida State, we have like 12 orientation classes, and every incoming freshman has to come. Now, don't only ask them when the, the students are coming. Your orientation office knows which group is coming when. And I learned this the hard way, but uh, your orientation group in May may not be any freshmen, but they're transfer juniors from community colleges. And usually your orientation will, will break them down. So find out during the orientation who is coming when. Like right now, this week, we have a group that's orientation that's coming. They're basically special uh, needs students that need a little bit more academic help. So we know that they're coming. And when we know that they're coming, we could prepare and say free, you know, algebra help. Chi Alpha students helping, willing to tutor someone, free tutoring. Why would I say that? Because I know who's coming, and I know what they're going to need. They need, you know, maybe international students are coming, you know. I uh, need to know when they're coming, and then I need to know how I can help them. So who, who is coming when? And then after your orientation, which doesn't necessarily mean they're connected with, I would go visit your IS, uh, International Student Ministry, or uh, the student the school version, not the camp Christian version, ISFM or whatever they're called. My campus are called International Student Center, ISC, all right? Go visit that person. Now, they're going to make some assumptions usually. You're going to just there to proselytize people. And so what I would do, which I did, and I would tell any, any of my past interns to do, go visit the International Student Center person. And before you say anything about Chi Alpha Christian Fellowship, just say, hey, I'm new here. We're forming a group. How can I help you? All right? Don't ask how they can help Chi Alpha. You ask them, how can Chi Alpha help them? And Samuel Mathai, the former international, Jerry Gibson's before Jerry. There's a few others. And Samuel, and he told me to do that. And I went to Roberta Christie. She's a liberal, you know, atheist. I don't know what she is, but she doesn't, she's not a Christian. And so I went up to her. I said, hey, Roberta, my name is Mario. I'm with Chi Alpha Christian Fellowship. We're a new group here. And I could almost see her eyes kind of like rolling her head. And then I said, what can I do to help you? And her mouth just dropped. And she goes, I've been here for 10 years, and no one has ever asked to help me. I've always had to ask for help. And so the very first thing I did, and I don't want to, I don't know if you have international friends class or anything, I don't want to take some time to that, is that we cleaned their lending closet, all right? If I had to scrub toilets to prove to them that I really cared about, I would do it. So if that means, can we clean your toilets? Can we scrub your floors? Can we clean your lending closet or stock your lending closet? Uh, do it. Are we doing a session on internationals? I imagine we are, right? So yes, okay. So they'll tell you all about lending closet and all that stuff. All right. Uh, so this is your first, your first few days on campus, first week. This will probably take you a, a full week to meet with everyone, walk around campus, do prayer, prayer walk. Then I would start asking questions about meeting and parking. I would go visit the orientation office. If you have a particular desire to help a people group, Maybe you have a desire to meet fraternity people. Well, go visit the Interfraternal Council on campus. What can we do to help? Usually with the name Chi Alpha, they're like, whoa, what is that? And so it, it gives you a, a foot in the door. And find out or an orientation who is coming when. Now, one of the things that I know about orientation, it starts in May usually. And you're going to have to start thinking about orientation. What do I want my Incoming students, freshmen, to know about Chi Alpha. And so you got to start thinking table, a union table. That's how it works on my campus. Maybe it's your campus is different. But a union table, because, see, here's the reason 
FSU or any state school wants organizations on campus, fraternities, sororities, campus ministries, is they know that if that freshman gets connected through a, a group, that they're going to come back their sophomore year. F, the, the, usually the university wants retention. They want students to stay. It helps pay them their bills. And if you have a student that doesn't get connected, doesn't make any friends, doesn't do anything, they're most likely not going to return. And so they have a desire for you to be there, and you got to be pretty smart while you're there. And so you got to start getting ready for orientation and internationals. In May is orientation. School starts in, in August. Let me just give you some other ideas, and then, um, and then we'll start planning. All right. Uh, oh. Meet all local AG pastors. All right, you're probably going to meet with them any on finances and, and getting pledge support. But meet with them. Talk to them. Uh, build their trust. They might think Chi Alpha is just somebody that's coming like this. Can I get something from you? You beat them to the punch. I know you need a pledge, but then you ask them, what can I do for you? Same with your district. I know um, Sue was talking about that this morning. Thank you. Uh, but visit your district. Go talk to them. Ask them how you can help them. I'm telling you, if you hear me, if you get this, what are you trying to do right now? You're trying to build relationships, right? I'm telling you, build relationships. There are too many people that come on campus who know exactly what to do but build no relationship, arrogant, and then they're going to learn the hard way. We need each other. You need the local pastor. You need this, this, the district to work with you. You need other local campus pastors to work with you. So meet all local AG pastors and make sure you just build some friendships and relationship with them. All right, I'm going to race. Is that all right? So let's just call that March, all right, for the first 30 days. April, our days 30 through 60. All right, I want to do a union table. All right, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the, the, the freshmen are coming and the transfer students are coming in, um, in May to do orientation. And so after I met the orientation director, I found out that they meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's groups that are coming in. And from 11 to 1 is what they call the orientation open table time, where they let students roam free and go from club to club. And most schools have this. Not all schools. You have to figure out what your school has. But for my school, it's two hour, and they get to roam around, eat lunch, and get to meet. All the fraternities are there. All the fraternities are there. And it's usually the only time when all the campus ministries are there as well. And it's funny, sometimes only the campus ministry people show up to orientation, and students are like, is this a Christian college? And it's like, no, we're just the only ones out here. And so <laughs> I've had that happen many a time. So I'm preparing for orientation in April. Now, April may be too late, so I'm going to just give you an idea. At orientation in May... I want, and we're going to cover this, I want a website, I want a brochure, I need people to man the table, if I have a giveaway, information, how am I going to give students information? Now in the old days, and maybe your school, old days for me, at FSU, they would give every freshman a packet, and we used to be able to slide in a flyer into that packet. Now, they may say no to you, but again, if you're trying to be creative, I have found a way to get your flyer into a packet is if you offer to fill all the packets. <laughs> all right? Every group hates doing it. Orientations, the RAs hate filling packets. It's an all-day job. You need about 15 people. But if you're really 
serious about this, you could probably find 15 people from your church to help you, young people, to fill packets. And you say, I'll do that for free. And then as long as you get permission to slide in your, your flyer. Many ways you have to be creative how to get in. Yeah. Did they, they were in the uh, packets? Right, right. I'm talking about the official orientation packet. Yeah. You know, that's an, that's an idea of a flyer or brochure. But if you can get that flyer or brochure inside a packet, let me tell you why. Florida State, 6,000 students are coming to orientation, and every 6,000 student is going to get that packet. But if they're not in a packet, I guarantee you're not going to hand out 6,000. They're not going to come to your table. A lot of those students don't even go. They go to lunch. They go home with mom and dad to the hotel. They get changed for the next orientation class. If you can get your flyer in that packet, you're going to get your name out. Now, for us at Florida State, they stopped doing the packets. So no more packets. And I was thinking, what am I going to do? And so we really had to put a lot of, a lot of effort on the brochure in orientation in May. And so what we're doing in April, you're reserving a table table for orientation. So that's step number one, orientation. I can't see what I'm doing, I-E-N-T-A, whatever. All right. Step one, you can have your flyer, you can have all your people, but if you don't have a reserved spot from the school, you're not going to hand it out. They're not going to let you be there. Find out what it takes to do a reservation to get your group. Now, here's the thing, and I have really forgotten a big one. Okay. <laughs> I, f I forgot. <laughs> you're not going to get a table unless the school recognizes you. All right? I I'm sorry. This should have been step one. This should have been step something before one. All right? is you have to get, I talked about getting permission, you have to be recognized by the school to be on that campus. And most schools says you have to have at least 10 signatures of students with their ID number in order to be a recognized group on campus. And I forgot about that. Get that right away. And usually you'll get that information from meeting your campus pastors. So getting 10 people is not that hard. They don't have to be born-again, spirit-filled Christians. They have to be warm-bodied students with an ID number, all right? My first, I don't even know who my first 10 were. I probably knew three of them, and the other seven, they got their friends to sign up. And so in order for us to be a registered group, Unregistered groups will not be allowed to put flyers. Unregistered groups will not allow to be get a table. Unregistered groups are not going to be welcome on campus. You must register first. Yes. We do every year. You have to re-register. Right. <laughs> Any questions about registration? Yes. I would do Chi Alpha uh, Campus Ministry. You could just tell them it's, na and that will help you. It's a national organization. We are on 200 plus campuses. And what state are you from? This guy. So you could just tell them, hey, we're on this campus, on that campus, and that, that campus. If they know it's a national organization, uh, I think they'll be okay. They're legit. And then they're going to start asking for constitutional bylaws. All right. Trust me, don't write your own. Uh, get, get one. Uh, National Chi Alpha has a generic constitutional bylaws. Get it from them. Get one from another campus past ministry, Chi Alpha ministry, from another state school. Trust me, I mean, we've gone through this, the hoops of what has to be that constitutional bylaws. We know what our legal rights are. So just get one that's kind of official from a national organization, and most likely the school will have no problem approving it. But you must be registered. And if you can't find 10 people, pray, talk to local pastors, 
Do they have a student? It, and the student doesn't have to be a 19-year-old kid. It could be a 40-year-old student who's taking night classes at that campus and has an ID. All right? So you got to think creative. you got to think outside the box to get those 10 names. But that's the most important thing. Yes? No, I don't normally do that. What I will do is I'll find Christians first. Okay? From, uh, usually you're going to know one or two people that are going to be coming to this school. Find them and get them to f get people that they know. Right. And I was kind of kidding about randomly grabbing some because they're not going to usually do that. But uh, I didn't know everybody. That doesn't mean my, the students that were signing didn't know them. They knew. Because you're going to grow. That list gets you in the door. That list doesn't mean they're going to be your student leaders in Chi Alpha. All right. You had your hand? Anyone else? All right. I thought I had some water up here. All right. All right, so April, I'm reserving table. I'm getting group recognition. I'm bad with this chalk here. Okay. Uh, I am laying out my flyer brochure. For us at Florida State Chi Alpha, I'm doing that right now. We just finished. I could probably print it out, a black and white copy of what ours will look like. I think what we're going to do is make our flyer a template that you can fill in the book. It's a really cool flyer, and um, somebody from Louisiana designed it for us. And I think it would be easy for you to just, you know, put in your picture, your information, but the design and the artwork will already be done. So if you email me, and you can take a prayer card, pledge card, um, I'll get you that template. I, we're trying to see if it's going to be legal and all that. But anyway, uh, work on the layout of flyer brochure now. Of course, it depends on money. How much money do you have? The flyers that we're producing, we're producing 5,000 flyers. It's, bl uh, it's c full color for 1500 bucks. All right? So if you don't have 1500 bucks and all you have is a copier from the local church, do me a favor, all right? Do me a favor. If you're going to do a flyer, using a black and white copier, make it simple. Okay, if you start putting pictures on there and they come out, you know, if it's a white guy and he looks black on the, uh, on the, on the <laughs> bad copy or vice versa, you know, don't, you're better off not printing anything than printing garbage, all right? So make sure it's done. That's why you need some time. And work on a layout. And let me tell you, there's, Call anyway. Just just get the Chi Alpha. Go to the website and look up uh, Iowa. All right. And if there's a Chi Alpha guy, call him up and ask him to send you the flyers that he's used in the past year, and he'll just probably attach them on a Word file for you. Get some ideas from other people, and and there's flyers all over the country that you could use. Yeah. Yes. If you can't get in a packet, you're going to have to hand them out. And they have to be pretty small. And so I'll tell you what we do. Okay? Yes. Yeah, life for the lost. Right. Yes, you can. But it depends on your district. If your district doesn't raise any life for the lost money, there is no money. All right? But if your district does raise money for life for the lost, it's potential. It doesn't ought, it, you can't go into the office and say, well, I want my $1,000. You have to build a relationship with whoever your Light for the Lost guy is. Light, light for the Lost. These are all Assemblies of God little t names that we use. And Light for the Lost is an organ, uh, it's the Assemblies of God. They raise money for literature. All right? And that literature has to have a salvation message on it. So on my flyer that I'll show you tomorrow has a salvation message on it. And Light for the Lost pays for it all. Because my district raises money for Light for the Lost, all right? And the guy that raises the money is a, likes Chi Alpha. And so it's up to his discretion 
how that money's spent. But if you're going to do a black and white, just a regular copy one, make sure it is done well and get someone to proofread it. I actually saw an InterVarsity guy in the SGA office print 5,000 flyers and just put Monday to, didn't put the date. You know, I'm looking and I was like, where's the date? And he goes, what? You know, because he was trying to do pre, the first week of school that we call dead, um, it's not dead week, it's, oh, right, before school starts. But nobody knew that. It could have been the following week. It just said Monday night, you know, Frisbee golf, Tuesday night, you know, putt-putt golf. But it never had the date. That flyer was no good. Because if somebody just picked it up and looked at it, it was like, okay, today's Tuesday. Is that tonight or next week? So make sure you get it proofread. Now, if you're going to do something professional, like go to a printer, you know, the $1,500 deal, they'll usually proofread it for you. But get someone outside of yourself to proofread it. So I'm working on the layout flyer brochure. The third thing is that uh, I am, if I want to have this great first week of, and we're going to talk about that, i got a rush, of activities the first week of August, then I need to begin to make reservations. At Florida State, what we do, uh, like, we used to do, like, free bowling on the, our campus had a bowling alley. So I had to reserve that in April for August. And sometimes April's too late. Uh, I, we have a picnic on the FSU's, owns their own uh, picnic area with a lake and all that. You have to reserve that. I do that in April or in March to reserve it because I want to use it in August or in September. And so uh, we want to use a room. Yes. Well, we've been kicked out all last year. I don't know. You know, you just have to be, I know this, all right? I know that God is bigger than that uh, reservation. I know that he understands the circumstances that you're in. And so I begin to pray, God, help me to be creative for another uh, venue. Uh, we, we met in a room. It was a big auditorium that fit 400. We've been there for three years. And they told us no all of last year. And so we had to make do with something else. And it was tough, but God gave us wisdom, and he gave us a lot of grace, and we were able to get, get around it. So be, be prepared for something like that. It, it'll happen. All right, so I'm laying out res, uh, reserving tables for orientation. I'm laying out the flyer and brochures. It takes time. You come with the layout. You give it to your printer. He's going to send you. Do you want to proof for it? It takes time. It takes a month for us. Matter of fact, I'm, the reason I can show you my brochure is that they're sending it to me to proof one last time. And so I have to go through this proof process about four times. And once I see it tonight, I'll give them the, the thumbs up and it starts printing. And it will be ready next week for our first orientation. Freshman, uh, freshman summer school starts next week at Florida State. And for us, 3,000 freshmen are coming in. It's what we call the new fall. Summer is the new fall. Fall is no longer where all the freshmen show up. Summer is. And so we have activities all next week that are just like the fall activities. You know, renting this building, you know, bowling and doing all this. We do it for the summer now, but we won't talk about that now. For you, you just start thinking fall when the students are showing up. Uh, all your activities that you're planning, you know, you got to plan them. And you got to, I would say, get someone, you know, um, for example, someone said, let's do human uh, board games, you know, make life-size uh, checker, you know. And, and, and so the question, sounds like a good idea, right? All right. Uh, I like the idea. Our staff like the idea. So I decided to ask a student before we actually did it. And so that's smart, too. Just get some feedback. What do you think if we did this game? Do you think it's cheesy? Do you think it's fun? And they would say, it's cheesy. So we probably won't do it. So I'll get a lot of feedback on what they think. One year we did um, Water Wars. And maybe somebody's going to suggest that to you. And it may work. Thank you so much. It's that chalk I'm swallowing. Water Wars. And it sounds like a good idea, right? You know, Florida, 
humidity. Uh, we had a dunking booth. We had, you know, like water guns, fights, booths, and, you know, all, the whole thing had to do with water. Guess what happened? Very few freshman girls came. Makes sense. What, you know, you're new to the group. You don't know anyone. And what, you're going to show up and you're going to get plastered with water? I mean, who wants to do that, you know? And so it was a great idea, but just really wasn't thought out real thoroughly. And we probably should have asked a few girls and what they thought. Would you come out and get plastered with water? You know, some would, but a lot of them wouldn't. It just, it's just too new. And so a lot of the games that we do now, uh, we, you, you know, you heard me this morning, we're trying to reach guys. Or we're trying to re make everyone feel comfortable. It's in an air-conditioned space. It's, in, it's something that anyone can do. And if, and if they don't want to do it, there's a place for them to sit down and not feel like they're, they're party poopers, all right? So uh, April, um, I'm planning, um, reserving. I'm doing the, the flyer. That takes a lot of time for me because I'm not really graphically inclined. And so I would work on it a lot. Now, technically, I don't do that anymore. I have staff that does that. But I remember that when it was all up to me. And you should see my first flyers. They're horrible. They're hilarious. But I will tell you this. My first flyers 13 years ago, it was pre-computer days, really. And I don't know, maybe some of our older guys here. Do you remember the blue line paper? You know, you'd have to line things up, you know, and just write because the blue line wouldn't get picked up on the copier. And so I had to do mine by hand, basically. And so that was harder. But I worked on it. I've done a brochure every year. And what happens with that brochure once it's printed and I'm starting handing it out in, in May, that brochure has my website on there. Uh, uh, I'm trying to be um, diverse in my photos. That brochure will give them a snapshot of who we are. I'm not assuming that they're going to go to my website. So I want phone numbers on there, physical address. I usually have like a, some sort of activities calendar, what's happening in August when they come. Uh, how to get involved can usually like fill in this little blank thing and mail it to us and we'll give you more information. You know, those are the old days. Now you can just say go to our website and fill in the blanks. And, and so uh, I'll do, you know, working on giveaways. You come to our orientation table. And I'll say, we're going to give away a free bike in the fall, our first week's activities. And so a bike costs 100 bucks. At, not even that, 70 bucks at Walmart. Nothing. And you could give one away. And every freshman would want a bike that lives on campus. We've given away iPods, Nanopod. $99 will attract students to come to our table. All right, and then we're going to talk about the table real quick. So April... Um, is just a lot of hard work laying it out. What you're going to be selling yourself. That's what you're doing. And don't forget, May and is April and May are usually district council days in the Assemblies of God. That means that's a big convention for your district. Go to it. Okay, raise your right hand. I promise, I promise. to go yeah. to district council. Yeah. All right. I've been going for 13 years. I don't like it that much, but I go because it's not about what I want. It's how can I forward the cause of Chi Alpha. And let me tell you, if you don't go, you will not forward the cause for Chi Alpha in the district. Raise your right hand again. I promise, I promise. to go yes. to sectional meetings yes. as often as I can. All right? Right, let me tell you, I know Sue, Sue told you about it this morning, but I am our section secretary and treasurer, all right? So I support what my section is doing. Sometimes they're boring, they're no fun to go to, but I'm building relationships and friendships, and one day some pastor is going to say to me, Mario, what can we do to help Chi Alpha? I guarantee he would never say that if I never go to sectional council or district council, all right? Uh, okay, so website, brochure, make sure it's done right. Please, don't make any mistakes on your brochure. Check for phone number. Get someone to read it. Because what makes seem like obvious to you, you, you won't catch it. Get someone to read it. So, all right. 
I'm erasing April, and we're going to go straight to May, which is day 60 to 90. And May happens. Usually I'll take a break a few days just to clear my head. Sometimes I just need to get, get away with God because orientation is coming. And let me tell you, orientation is a killer on your body. It's usually, for me, it's usually in the summer, and it's blazing hot outside, okay? And it's really tough because most likely you're not, you don't have a building, a Kayapa building. You're starting from scratch, yeah? You can, usually, um, at FSU, it's right on their front page. Uh, activities fall, or, or if you go to your orientation office, they'll give you their activity calendars. And that's a good thing. I look at the orientation calendar at, um, at the school. You know what? At my school, I think at a smaller school it's different. At my school, which is a very big school, a lot of the people don't go to the orientation open week. Let's just say 1,000 people go. That means there's 4,000, 5,000 other freshmen that aren't going. Now, if you go to a small school and, you know, they're bringing, you know, uh, 50 cent to uh, <laughs> your campus. <laughs> if they're bringing 50 cent to your campus uh, and you're a school of 2,000, most likely I would not compete with that night. Even if people don't like them, they're going to go just to see what the heck's going on. All right? So you need to know what's going on in school when you're planning your thing. We've gotten to the point where we don't really care what Florida State's doing because it's such a big school that, um, that we're going to do what we're going to do. But you may not be in that same boat. All right, May. One of the things I've, I do often as well is, uh, see, here we go, is I go to the housing office. Why would I go to the housing office? Anybody? Right, well, we kind of know. Well, we, that would be good to know when freshmen are moving in. All right. Right. I, I, I don't know if you're doing a class. On, I, maybe I'm the one that's supposed to give you the ideas. All right. Uh, be creative. Right. That's, tr that's true, too. Uh, all these are right answers, and there are no wrong answers. But the reason I would go visit the housing office is that RAs uh, are the ones that put up those little flyers in your hallway. You're not allowed to go into, at least in my school, I can't go into a dorm if I want to. I don't have the right key slot. And maybe I don't know the student that lives there, but I want my flyer in that dorm. And most likely, your school has a policy that you can put flyers up in the hallway as long as the RA puts them up. So I go to the housing office and I talk to the, whoever I need to talk to. And I like to put a flyer in the hallway. Uh, what's the policy? And usually say, well, it has to be, you know, can't be anything vulgar or anything like that. And just information. And then we print, uh, I think, 65 flyers every other week. And so what they do is they take my 65 flyers and they go to the RA box and they said, you know, they just put them in their boxes. RA comes that afternoon, picks up all their information, and they know they're supposed to tack up my, all the flyers that they get in that box. And every week, in every dorm that's open on every floor, there is a Chi Alpha flyer. And just a straight 8.5 by 11 flyer. Make it tasteful. Make it informational. Maybe all it is is Chi Alpha Christian Fellowship. Uh, check our website. And the thing about websites, you know this because you're, you're a web generation. They love it because they can check you out without checking you out, all right? And that, that feels very good for every student. So make sure your website, if you don't have a website, I think you're still better off not having one than having a bad one, all right? Yes? It all depends. Some schools, no way. My school, there is no way I can get a flyer in that mailbox unless I get permission. And actually, we got permission. Remember the, the packets that stopped? Well, I asked God, give me some wisdom. How are we going to get into every freshman? Well, every freshman has a P.O. box. And so we went, and we were very nice to the ladies. And please, be nice to everyone. Okay? 
I really think I lost my space last year because another Christian group didn't get their space, and boy, they let them have it. She told me, she goes, some of your Christian groups on campus are mean. You know what I did? And this is just a side note. I bought her some flowers the next day, and I said, I apologize on behalf of all the Christian groups if they've mistreated you. I still didn't get my space, but I wanted her to know. And I didn't do it for that reason. I, I wanted to set a good example and testimony of Jesus Christ on my campus. And so, right, there's other avenues. But you can get a normally, I guarantee you, every hall has flyers. Again, the school's reason is they want you to get connected to a group. I got, how much time do I have? Like 10 minutes, 8 minutes? Man. No, I got 2.30 to 3.20, yes. All right, real quick. And I'm doing the next class. You guys need a break? All right, one second, one second. Let's do this. Let's take a break. I'll finish up, and then we'll continue on what a healthy ministry looks like, all right? That was a great song. They need to reinstitute songs like that. All right, I'm going to continue, and then I'm going to let you ask some questions. I, um, I don't think Bill would be upset if I continue on 100 days and then shorten what a healthy campus ministry looks like. All right. Housing. Go visit the housing. We're talking about uh, April, May, right? Where are we? May, right? May. Get permission to go into the dorms. May. Uh, talk to the postal people, right? Someone said postal. Don't go postal. Go see the postal people. All right? Uh, pray, man. You know, hopefully you're praying the whole time. Prayer. Recruit. Helpers. Now, I didn't have a choice, but I didn't have any help to help me my first years on Chi Alpha to, to do an orientation table. But the best thing that you could possibly do is get students to man the table. A lot of times, the reason I say that is that you may have an 18-year-old girl who's looking around for campus ministry, and it might freak her out when she sees a 35-year-old guy at the time, you know, back then, or a 40-year-old guy. It's like, hey, you want to come part of our group? And it's like, <laughs> oh. So this past year, we were real blessed. Um, we had like eight students. Rhea, my associate, was there, but she just kind of stood behind the scenes just in case there was some. And what we do is, as adults, uh, we try to talk to parents. A lot of times parents are coming. And so we just engage with the parents, let the students talk with students. And so uh, recruit helpers, young people, young people meaning people who are students, to catch the vision. The reason I say this is if you wait till August to meet freshmen, you're in deep trouble, okay? I, I look at orientation as seed planting time, okay? I'm planting seeds, planting seeds in May, all of June, and part of July, all the orientations. I'm planting seeds because August is coming, and I'm hoping to reap a harvest of people I've connected with by planting seeds. And don't be discouraged by a girl who's been forced there or a guy who's been forced there by his mom and dad, and they bring you to your table, and he's like, and the mom and dad's asking questions, and the girl behind them is just rolling her eyes like, oh, you know, goodness, parents, you know, what are you doing that for? And I would have lots of those, but the funny thing is I have a girl in our group. She's not in our group anymore. She's an assistant with me. Her name is Natalie, and she was one of those girls rolling her eyes. But got connected when August came. Because you never know what's going to happen between May when you first meet her, meet him. God could be working in their hearts. And come August, they're ready. So don't discount people's attitudes in May. And so recruit helpers and then show up. Please, I beg you to show up. And don't miss any orientation classes. It is so much... 
Let me tell you, it would be easy just say, you know, it's too hot or it's raining. In Florida, it could rain on that side of the building and be sunny on that side of the building. All right? It's true. And so don't miss any orientation classes. Now, another thing I would do if I were you, if you want to meet Christian kids, is consider volunteering at district youth camp. All right? Now, listen, if district youth pastor doesn't know you, district director doesn't know you, and you call him up and you say, I want to be a counselor, he is not going to let you be a counselor. All right? So don't even shoot that high. If he doesn't know you and you say, hey, Jim, Bob, district youth director, my name is Susie Q, and I'm the new person at Chi Alpha at, uh, you know, Western Florida University, and I want to be a blessing to you. Uh, do you need someone to do security overnight, like from 11 at night to 6 in the morning? Do you need someone to clean up the cafeteria or pick up the trash around the campgrounds? I would like to volunteer those positions, any of those things like that. And I would love to come if, if you let me speak to the seniors so I can connect them to our campus ministry. I don't know of a DYD that's going to say no to the overnight security or the trash pickup. Now, he may already have filled, but I, if you let him know that you're willing to do that, you're going to get in. Now, if you're going to get in there and say, I'd like to be uh, the night speaker, <laughs> all right, it's not going to happen. Okay? It's not going to happen. But... If you want to be night security guard, it will happen. And they're going to look at you and say, hey, this guy's serious about helping us, and we'd like to help them with students. There's a wealth of students at camp, juniors and seniors, that you can connect with. The funniest thing is I would go and I would help at camp, and there is a guy in my group who's a grad student in, in law school. I didn't know this, but when he was in high school, he would go to camp, and he remembered me. And he remembered one time I did get to share one time, and he remembered that. And he's been connected for Kyle for four years because I met with him planting seeds that were going to spring up later, three years later. And so that's what this is all about, planting seeds. And I would say I could almost look at any campus ministry and look at where they're at, and I could tell you if they've been working 100 days before the events happened. People who do well in Kayafa are the ones that work at it way before they need to. And so that's what this is all about, planting seeds. All right, so uh, May is crazy um, with orientation. You're getting all your material done. You're getting, you're getting meeting space. Uh, you can do a mail. I've, I worked on an ad for the local, local school paper, you know, and I did an orientation issue. Um, I've done union tables, and then we start working the, working the tables. And so every time someone comes to my table in May, I ask them to fill out a little card, and then that fill out the card. After that, we go to our computer, and we input their information, and then we send them an email. So when they're home, when they get home the next day, they got an email, hey, thanks for coming by our Chi Alpha table. If you lost your brochure, our website is xafsu.com. If you have any questions, call us. Very simple, not heavy-handed. Just let you know that we appreciate you stopping by our table. And then we're going to do the, you know, the, the nano iPod uh, giveaway in August when you come for our, orienta our open week. And so that's day 60 through 90, uh, all through May. And then uh, June, for me, is I come to RUI. And or I take some time with my family. For us, we do summer Chi Alpha. I have Chi Alpha meetings every Thursday night. I have four small groups going in, in process right now. So some groups don't because they don't have enough students, and that's fine. But for us, we have uh, quite a few students here for the summer, and we uh, invite them. Next week is when our freshmen come in. Um, what is today? Monday. Not this Thursday. The following Thursdays are big Chi Alpha freshman push service. I'll put our best foot forward. I'll put our band, our best 
band that we can put together. But one thing, we, we make sure I prep our students that are there to be very welcoming. The good thing is once you do it enough, you don't have to do it every year. It's not fake at all. So if a, a new person comes in, I know someone's going to reach out to them, take them out to eat, call them the next day, and hang out with them. But you have to train them to do that when uh, June comes around for freshmen. So you're planning for May, June, July, and especially August. For us, we do, let me just give you some ideas. But let me tell you about these ideas. The ideas that I do the first week of school before school starts work for us. They may not work for you. All right? One of the things I had to complain about RUI was that some of the ideas our interns would come to my group in the fall, and they would tell me, I learned this at, at RUI. We could do this, 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 and that. And I'm like, can't do it, can't be done. You know, and I just I felt bad. I had to shoot down every idea. At Florida State, we have different regulations, different rules. We can't ride around in go-karts. We're not allowed to go in people's dorms. We can't help people move in. We can't do a lot of those things, all because of security. And so, well, I'm going to give you some ideas, but you remember the creative tool I helped you? How can I reach freshmen? Scamper, think of some ideas how you can reach freshmen. Maybe look at other ministries, what they have done, how you can tweak it and adapt and do something different. You know, the bowling idea, a lot of these ideas I got were from other groups that have been doing it, and I just adapted it for our group. All right? For example, I'm going to give you some ideas, and then we're going to stop. And I'll tell you how things did, if they did well, if they flopped. But these are some of the ideas. I did bowling. I'll tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly for bowling. The good, it's air-conditioned space. At our school, you can, I can rent the lanes for three hours, okay? Everyone has bowled before. And you can look foolish at bowling, and it's no big deal because everybody looks foolish at bowling, all right? The guy that looks really weird is the guy that does really well, and he's there, and he's doing. <laughs> and that guy's like, whoa, he's weird. And so um, bowling, the bad side, the bad thing about bowling is for us, uh, as we were growing, let's just say we had 50 in our group, all right? And 300 people showed up at bowling. And we've had that happen. We had the whole bowling alley packed, but I only had 50 of my regular students there. And my regular students felt overwhelmed. So we had lanes filled with brand new people, 10 people, five per lane in one little spot that had no idea what Chi Alpha was. And so that was a bummer. So you have to have a lot, enough people to fill in each lane so that they can be the spokesperson for Chi Alpha. One year I thought it would be really cool if we could do cosmic bowling. Cosmic bowling is when they turn the lights on and everything's glow in the dark. It is really cool but lousy in meeting people when you can't see them. All right? <laughs> so it was a great idea on paper. But in practicality it did not work for us. We couldn't tell you who was there and who wasn't. So uh, one of the things that we do is a big burger bash. And a lot of groups do this. We've had up to 400 people show up at a burger bash. Free food, that open week of school, will draw a crowd. And we've done it. And we've done it well. A lot of people come. Um, as far as the retention percentages, you know, I might guess it's 10%, 15 20% of a burger bash. We've done water wars, and I already told you a little bit about that. We've done movie... Smoothie night. That works real good, except the movie part causes you to be quiet and to watch something and not a lot of interaction. So I don't really like this that much. And what we've done is usually X the movie part and just do the smoothie part. Yes? Yeah, like, yeah, like um, Napoleon Dynamite, yes. Right. Who said that? I rebuked that. Christina Batten. 
Christina is the perfect, she knows what I'm talking about. She was one of my students, then she interned with me, and now she's pioneering up in New Jersey. Let's give her a hand. It's the way that you want it. Um, our best thing that we've done, I'm going to give you my trade secret, all right, is scavenger hunt. Now, why did the scavenger hunt work? Raise your hand if you want to take a stab at it. Yes? Interaction. <laughs> Who said to raise your hand? You got to work together. Small groups. No pressure. Competition. Yes. Anyone else? They're all right. They're all correct. What I found was that if I can get two regular students that are part of Chi Alpha to get in a car with three brand new students and they're going to be together for the next two hours to do certain things, it really builds a lot of community and connective. I was telling this couple back here from Texas, when I look at, you know, we, do, we take pictures for everything. And I take pictures at the Burger Bash. I'll take pictures at the... The bowling alley, I'll take pictures of all the things that we do for free, the picnic, and this and that. And then I go, you know, year, you know, six months later, and I look at all those photos. And when I look at the, uh, the scavenger hunt photos, almost every single person that was involved in that scavenger hunt is still connected with our ministry. Somehow they connected with the, the two people that know Chi Alpha, and they, they connected and burgers, sometimes they eat, they got their free chips, they listen, and they, they were gone. Yes? I have a quick question. Uh, uh, Cruz, I'm transferring now from Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, yes. Yes. And that happens to us as well. I think if you can get them connected with someone that will reach out to them and, and they know a face. Uh, the scavenger hunt for us worked really good. And sometimes you have to do it again every semester. Yeah, and you know, uh, who knows what that is, right? And we, we have, you know, in our, even in our ministry, we have people that don't come back. They're, they're there, but they're, they don't come back to our ministry. It could be all sorts of reasons for that. Uh, Christina, can you think of any other ideas that we do, we did? We usually do the same things we, <laughs> year after year because the, the, bur the burger bash works really good to get lots of people. The bowling works. We don't do the bowling anymore because we just feel like it's, it's counterproductive for what we want, but it may work for you, even if it's a local bowling alley down the street. But you got to make sure it's free for students. And so we'll pay the 300 bucks to rent the, the, uh, the bowling alley. And if you ask people, you ask your pastors, local pastors, we're going to do a big outreach in the front. Uh, can you help us with some money? And I believe people will help you. Um, yes. Right, that stuff is really good. That stuff's very expensive. But if you can get the money for that, you know, it's like five hundred bucks to rent one of the one thing per night. Yes. Oh, so I, I have a question. Like, there's just people that are on the ministry that find themselves doing different stuff. You have like almost exact same kind of people that are following. So you have to sit down. Right, and and if you have the right location, if you have the right property, you can do that. Right, so if you have a place that has basketball and has volleyball, utilize it. And so, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind getting some feedback, just get you to hear some ideas. You had your hand up? All right, anybody else? Yes?
when you do this on campus, yeah, for us, you'd have to have a food uh, licensing to, to give away food. Um, we can't even give away smoothies. We used to do hot dogs, hamburgers on campus. We can't do any of that anymore. Um, I was going to say something else. Give, anybody else? We've got to finish this segment, and then we'll go to the next segment. Yes. Right. You know, what I would do if I were you, I would go onto people's websites, Chi Alpha websites across the country, and just see what they're doing. And if something is intriguing, call them up. How are you doing it? What's the cost? Every campus pastor I know in Chi Alpha would love to share information. You're blessed because when we started 13 years ago, there really were no websites. And if you didn't come to RUI, they're very difficult to connect with people. One of the best things we did, and it's a lot of fun, very, very expensive. We hired this company called Kramer International, and they would come and do music videos. They'd have the blue screen, and then you'd do the lip syncing to the, the music that you wanted. And we, we were able to get a lot of freshmen to come. And Although it was a little hard for some freshmen to go out there and be crazy on a video that people they didn't know. But it was one of the, the most fun things that we've done to help people connect relationships with them so that... We, we try to build a bridge. The only, thing, the only reason we do this is to help build bridge and communication bridges with people so that when uh, we have the opportunity to share the gospel, that they're going to listen. And so we do a big Thursday. Our Thursday night, first Chi Alpha, we do it outdoors usually because we can't have an inside space. But we get a big draw. We pass out flyers. We work hard. We sweat. We work the pavement in passing out flyers. And so, I mean, if we're passing out 500 a day, and, and people say, I already got one. That's all right. A lot of times what I'll do is with the, the brochure, and we put them in a P.O. box, I'll go to the trash about once an hour and pick up my, my nice, expensive brochures that people have trashed away. But I'll use them. I'll recycle them. And so they're, they're, they're going to they're gonna throw them away. And so uh, let me tell you, this is not a one-year wonder stuff. It takes Semester after semester after semester. And then what you build is a lot of continuity. School now knows you. You're not a short-termer. You're not some fly-by-nighter. You're going to be there. Uh, you're serving the school. You're helping internationals. And we could talk about, I'll talk about later maybe, how we can help international students. But I think you have a class on that. And so, but let me just take a 60-second pause, just stretch, and then we'll go on to healthy groups.